Welcome to the 12th and final day of the 12 days of Sin Miss. We made it, y'all. I cannot believe that I have posted 12 days in a row. What an accomplishment. This series has been so fun to make, but now I'm exhausted. But you guys have been enjoying them, so it's worth it. My gift to you for the final day of Sin Miss is... My unsolicited opinions. I mean, when have I ever not given them? I mean, that's kind of the whole basis on my channel. I was planning on posting a big video for the final day of Sin Miss, but as the days have gone on, I've realized how sleepy I am. I am a sleepy gal. So today, I just wanted to chill. I wanted to make a laid back video and just talk some shit with you guys. I imagine you are watching this on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or maybe the day after Christmas, and you just want want some light, fun entertainment, and that's what I'm here to provide you. So we're going to go through the subreddit r slash am I the asshole. Now I love am I the asshole because you typically get one of three stories. The first type of story you get is a clearly embellished story where OP had way too much time on their hands and decided to take up creative writing for the day. Two, you get a post where someone is trying to subtly humble brag, but it's not so subtle and you could tell this person is clearly so far up their own behind. And the third type of post you get is a person who completely lacks self-awareness and posts things like, I just hit my sister with her car and spat on her firstborn child. Am I the asshole? Like, yes, Jonathan, you are. So to keep on theme, to keep on brand for today, the stories I have picked out are Christmas related since, you know, it's Christmas Eve by the time this is going up. So we're going to read through them. Some of them are long, some of them are short, and we're going to give our own judgment based on the information we are given. So first up, we have, am I the asshole for not inviting them to my Christmas party after they didn't invite me to their wedding? Interesting, interesting. Let's see. I throw a pretty big Christmas party every year going on a decade now. A few years ago at one I threw, my friend Tara met my former co-worker Tony and they hit it off. They dated for a while and two years later, once again at my Christmas party, she showed up with the ring on her finger and they announced for the first time that they were engaged. I was super happy for them. They got married this spring. We didn't get invited. Fucking bitch, Tara. When I was sending around my party invitations this year, I didn't see any reason to invite them back if they didn't think I wasn't worthy of making their guest list. I've known them both for years, basically introduced them, and they literally announced their engagement at my home. It got back to me today that they're very upset with us for not inviting them this year, that my party is something they consider special and they think I'm being petty. A couple friends mentioned it was a smaller wedding and they feel like I'm just punished Punishing them. It wasn't though. There were probably 200 people and I knew at least 50 of them. 200 people is an insane number, by the way. I don't think I've met 200 people in my life. And I was a little surprised at some of the names that made the cut over us. I didn't make a stink about it or anything, but I don't see why I should welcome them into my home again after being snubbed like that. My partner thinks I should let it go and invite them back, but I don't see any reason why I should. Am I the asshole? Queen, whoever you are, you are not the asshole. I mean, the general rule is your party, your rules. If you don't want to invite a certain person, you don't have to invite that person. And also, it just seems so odd that Tara and Tony wouldn't invite this person to their wedding, especially since they said that they've known each other for years and they literally introduced them. Like, that seems like a just like a random stab in the back. Like, I don't know if there were underlying issues going on and they didn't feel comfortable inviting this person to their wedding, but based on the information alone, that does make them an asshole. This is asshole-ish. Also, I have to say, announcing big news at an event that is not for you or not thrown by you is a little tacky to me. It's like someone proposing at a wedding. This is like a much smaller scale because they're just announcing an engagement at a Christmas party, but it's sort of attention seeking behavior and takes away from the real reason the party is happening. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just think it's tacky. And also I understand with some weddings that people like to keep it small, like by small, I mean immediate family, like the parents, siblings, whoever. I get that. But the fact 
fact that they invited 200 people and your name was not on the list, and especially since you knew a lot of the people attending, is so odd. And if they had underlying issues with you, they should have communicated that. So yeah, I don't know why they're butthurt over not being invited to some Christmas party when they literally didn't invite you to their wedding. So no, you are not the asshole. You are completely justified in not inviting them and your partner should get over it. Let's see what people have to say. Not the asshole. You can invite and not invite whoever you want without any reason. True. And if they want one, it is a smaller party this year. Hey, that's good. That's good. On what planet is 200 people a small party? I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. 100% this. If the event was so special to them, then they would associate it with you as well as a special friend and would have invited you. Yeah, I mean, you literally introduced them. If it wasn't for you, they wouldn't be having that wedding. They owe you their lives. I'm just kidding, but they should have invited you. Who doesn't like a party? I mean, I don't because I'm an introvert and I get sensory overload, but it also feels so tacky to steal OP's Christmas party to announce their engagement like that. If they asked OP beforehand, then it would be different, but just showing up with the rings on, exactly! These Redditors are on point. But yeah, you did nothing wrong. Invite who you want, and if they're mad about it, then tough. Anyway, let's let's move on to the next one. So this one is almost a month old, so I'm a bit late in reacting to it. And there's already been a verdict made. So I'm not going to say what the verdict is until the end, but I'm going to read through it, give my opinion, and then share what the general consensus is on Reddit. Am I the asshole for banning alcohol from Christmas? My husband's family likes to drink. Every holiday includes multiple bottles of wine slash cocktails. I hate drinking. I have never drank. My father was an alcoholic. I think it's childish if you can't have fun without drinking. This year, I'm hosting Christmas for a change, I decided. Since it's at my house, no alcohol allowed. We are all getting older and it's time to grow up. My husband's sister called to ask what she could bring. She saw a recipe for a Christmas martini that she wanted to bring. I told her about my no alcohol rule. She didn't say much, but must have told the rest of the family. Some of them started texting me, asking me if I was serious and saying that it is lame, but I'm not budging. Now, it turns out my husband's sister is hosting an alternate gathering that almost Almost everyone is choosing to go to instead. It's so disrespectful, all because they would have to spend one day sober. My husband told me he talked to his sister and we are invited to her gathering and he said we should just go and stop causing issues, but I won't. It's so rude. Now husband is mad because I'm making him stay home and spend Christmas with me, but it was my turn to host and I chose to have no alcohol. They could have dealt with it for one year. So is this person the asshole? One thing I don't get is them saying that there's no alcohol allowed because they're getting older and it's time to grow up because normally drinking alcohol is associated with adults and being an adult. But like I said with the last post, it's your party. It's your rules. And especially since this person's dad was an alcoholic, I understand why they would be sensitive to being around a bunch of drunk people. And I get their frustration with not being able to have fun without drinking. I don't know if it's childish. I don't know if that's the word to describe it. But I mean, I get that as someone who rarely drinks and doesn't do any substances. But I think since it's your party, they should respect the rules. However, it is also also in their right to reject the invitation and go elsewhere if they're not happy with the no alcohol rule. Like, do I think it's a little bit of an asshole move for her sister-in-law to host a separate party so people can drink? A little bit, but also it's their right, if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't want to slam this person because it's clear they have, you know, some sort of trauma when it comes to alcohol. But I don't know if I would say this person's the asshole fully, but I also, I don't know. I'm having difficulty in weighing in just because I'm trying to be sympathetic to them because it's clear that they have some trauma when it comes to alcohol with their dad being an alcoholic. And, you know, maybe this family gets rowdy when a little alcohol gets in their system. But I don't know. I don't think anyone is the asshole in this situation. I think, oh my God, I don't know. I can't decide. Just like it's your right to have a dry Christmas, it is also your guest's right to go to a Christmas with alcohol. Now for the general consensus, and I was a little surprised with this. Overall, this person was ruled an asshole, which like, I don't know. I don't know if I would call them an asshole for it. Yeah, that seems a little too harsh. Let's see what the comments have to say, because I'm curious. You're the asshole and the Grinch who stole booze, miss. Uh, I don't know if I'd call them the Grinch. That seems a little harsh. Yeah, a lot of the people are just roasting this person. Like, I don't know. You don't have to agree, but people seem to be taking it a little too far. Seriously, both my sisters are recovering alcoholics, and even they would never be so uptight. Then saying they have to grow up is just so f***ing smug. 
I mean, every person is different when it comes to their relationship with alcohol. So just because this person's sisters are not that uptight, that doesn't mean the person who wrote this has to be the same way. But I would agree that saying have to grow up is very smug because number one, it's contradictory because alcohol is associated with grown ups. And two, I don't know, it kind of looks down on people who drink the ones who casually drink. I mean, I'm undecided. Uh, please let me know how you feel. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. Anyway, let's move on to the next post. All right. So this one's from today, the day I'm filming. So there hasn't been a verdict made. So let's make the verdict ourselves. Am I the asshole for saying it's either me or my sister's BF at Christmas? Background. My sister, 23F, and I, 23F, both live at home. The holidays are always a very special time for me. My mom and I cook and host together, and I love it. My sister doesn't help out much, if at all, and has a knack for ruining holidays, but she's family. My sister is often jealous of me and relentlessly picks on me and tries to make me feel bad. It makes me sad that we don't have a better relationship, but I have tried to be her friend. I can usually tolerate my sister. I really want this holiday to be extra special because my dog is terminally ill and my grandparents are getting older. On oh, the dog. Issue. Recently, my sister's behavior towards me has been ramping up. For example, this week I was sick with the flu and as soon as I woke up, she came into my room and called me disgusting and gross multiple times. What the fuck? <laughs> You're sick. You can't help it. God. I asked her to help give our dog medicine, which is a two-person job, and she picked a fight saying nobody likes me and she can't stand being around me enough to help. What is her deal? Someone better get the stick out of her ass. I can't use our shared bathroom anymore because every time I go in, she starts banging on the door, yelling and harassing me. She gets like this when she has a BF. I actually helped set up my sister and her BF, male 25, because I'm friends with one of his friends. I'm using quotes because they haven't defined things and started dating around five weeks ago. My sister was lukewarm about him until my mom and I suggested she move on when he was playing games. Okay. My sister invited her BF to Christmas without consulting anyone before they even hugged. I talked to my mom about being uncomfortable with the BF coming over for Christmas, given my sister's recent behavior. My sister has a pattern of trying to dominate conversations and humiliate me in front of her friends, boyfriend, anyone who will listen. I even tried to get to know the boyfriend and I made a group chat to send them a link for date ideas I thought they'd like. I was later berated by my sister for making the group chat and the boyfriend never responded or even thumbed up the message. Anyway, my mom agreed with my concerns and said to my sister that she should rethink bringing the boyfriend. It could be awkward because nobody in my family knows him. My sister flew off the handle at this suggestion and said a lot of awful stuff about me, but then started to be nice to my mom and assure her it will be good. I am not satisfied with this because I don't think it's genuine and she also told lies about me. Like I flipped her off to make herself look better. What is her fucking deal, bro? So I told my mom I was having anxiety about the boyfriend coming in Christmas and that I don't want to work so hard to be treated shabbily and feel awkward, uncomfortable in my home. My mom said she's a big fan of faking it for the holidays and we can't uninvite them. Yeah, you can. As far as I'm concerned, we never invited him in the first place. I told my mom it's either me or the boyfriend. My mom said she understands if I don't want to be part of it. Then I said that if he comes, I'm not helping out at all and my mom responded, we can talk about it later, but I won't budge and hung up on me. Am I the asshole? <sighs> You know, we can't choose our family, but in times like this, I'm sure this person wishes she can. Wow. Everyone in the family is a fucking asshole. First of all, five weeks, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but that seems like a little too soon to invite someone to a holiday dinner. But I don't know. I don't know the relationship outside of what we've been told, but the sister sounds like a nightmare. The mom sounds like a pushover. Girly, girly pop, if I was being treated like this, I would not go to any holiday event going forward. You don't deserve to be made fun of, disrespected expected, berated, or any of the sort by your family. And just because they are related to you, that doesn't mean they can disrespect your boundaries. Because people seem to think that you can't set boundaries with your family or family boundaries don't count when they absolutely do. Especially since you're an adult now. Like, what the f***? Respectfully, your sister sounds like a, a word I cannot say on YouTube. I don't know. It seems like you're trying to be as accommodating as possible, trying to be as welcoming as you can to the boyfriend who you don't really know. But your sister is just not having it. She's just being a nightmare. And the fact that your mom is choosing some random dude over her daughter is just nuts. Nuts, I tell you. Let's see what people have to say in the comments. Not the asshole. Your sister seems like an absolute terror to be around. You shouldn't have to be bullied in your own home, let alone on Christmas. Also an elf 
for her mom in this situation as she fully admitted to faking it rather than making her daughter feel comfortable. Yeah, they basically said what I said. Like, your mom is allowing you to be disrespected by not setting your sister straight. If you can, I would try to go to a friend's house for Christmas or a different family member's house for the holidays. You don't deserve to be treated like this. They are doing you wrong. You deserve better, queen. I am here for you. Holy sh**. And it's families like this that wonder why one of the family members goes no contact. Wow. Just, just wow. All right. So here's the fourth post. Just like the second post, I am a little bit late to this one. This one was posted 14 days ago at the time of filming and the verdict has already been made by the users of the subreddit, but I'm going to read through it for my own opinion and then share the verdict with you. Am I the asshole for calling my wife ridiculous for saying that she won't attend my family's Christmas over some stockings? My mom has a tradition for every Christmas, and that is to get custom stockings of her grandchildren's names, Cody, Mia, Sammy, Elena, etc., and hang those stockings near the fireplace. My wife and I have been together for three years. She has a son, my stepkid, from her former marriage. When she found out about the tradition mom has, she said she expects my stepson to get his own custom stocking and be hanged along with the other kids' stockings. I asked my mom, and she said that she loves her step-grandchild, but does not feel comfortable yet to have a stocking of his name and hang it in her home. Apparently, my wife refused to drop it and chose it as a hill to die on and even told me she would not be attending the Christmas party if mom doesn't do it. We started arguing about it for days. I finally blew up and told her it was not reasonable for me or her to dictate how my mom decorates her home and what stockings she hangs. She started crying and called me blind for not seeing how my family are treating my stepson. I said they love him and some stocking isn't going to prove anything. She said she wouldn't go then and I called her ridiculous for deciding not to go over or something so trivial. We have been in conflict about it since then, and she's refusing to even speak to me. Am I the asshole for saying that it was ridiculous of her to decide not to go over some stockings? My stepson's age is nine. So the child in question is young. The child who is being excluded from this stocking Christmas tradition is very young. He's not even in middle school yet. And I think regardless of how your mother feels about her daughter-in-law, aka the wife in this case, that's no reason to take it out on the son. That's no reason to leave out the little boy. I mean, I don't know the dynamic between this person's wife and the rest of the family other than what is in this post, but I don't think the nine-year-old should be getting the short end of the stick because of it. Like if the mother-in-law and the wife have an issue, they should leave it between the two of them. Leave the stepson out of it. It is not his fault. And it's a stocking. How long does it really take to make a custom stocking for someone? All right, you go to Home Goods, you go to Michael's, you go to... Not Hobby Lobby because they're trash. You get a glitter pen, you paint their name on the white part of the stocking and boom, you're done. Like how far out of your way do you have to go to make a custom stocking for someone? I don't know, it just seems like so shitty and like I get why the wife would be mad. And you are a piece of shit husband for not backing your wife up. And the reason why I think this person is not reacting in a sympathetic way is because this kid is not his biological son. So like why should he care as much as the wife, if that makes sense? Not to put words in his mouth or whatnot, not, but like that wouldn't really surprise me. I don't know. It just seems unnecessarily shitty to leave out a little boy on Christmas. Like what a piece of shit you are for that. I'm curious to see what the comments have to say though. You're the asshole. Three years isn't enough. Your mom's a real piece of work. Amen. And OP is a real piece of work for supporting mom. Mm-hmm. OP is the reason places like r slash just no mother-in-law exists. I'm pretty sure he hasn't accepted the child himself or he would be the one dying on that hill instead of his wife. Thank you. I told you. Dude, for real. Proud bonus mama here and only been one for the last eight months. We aren't even married and my mother has already purchased more gift for those kids than anyone else, LMAO. It seems small, but after three years, how do you not see that child as your grandkid after that long? The mother-in-law is going out of her way to be a piece of shit. To a nine-year-old who doesn't deserve it especially. And the wife, of course. So not surprisingly, the general consensus for this post is that the husband is the asshole and I would 100% agree. I think you should back your wife up on this. I I think you should back up your stepson too on this, even though he's not your biological kid. Do better, man. Do better. All right, last but not least, we have one more, and this one's a pretty long one, so uh, get ready for that. Am I the asshole for quitting my job because I got written up and leaving my store shorthanded? This is gonna be good. As the title suggests, I just quit my job. I was employed at a mid-sized grocery store for three years, and two days ago was the final straw. We had been short-staffed for several months. As a former retail worker, I feel that 
not so hard. On my team, there were supposed to be seven employees and we only maintained four. We would hire workers, but they wouldn't work out for one reason or another. So we were constantly at four employees. Oh my God, did we work together in the past? With this, we had to constantly stay later than scheduled to make sure the job got done. Oh my God, I am getting like intense deja vu right now. Upper management would be pissed that we stayed late and also pissed if we didn't finish. So we were always in trouble. You know, if they want the job done, then they should come in and do it. Sorry. Two weeks ago, they hired a new guy, Bob, and at first he seemed pretty decent. I started to notice little things he was doing wrong, like stocking stuff crooked or in the wrong spot. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have cared, but part of my job involved working after him, so it would take me longer to do my job because I had to fix his mistakes. I informed my manager, James, that he needed to work with this guy and train him better, dot dot dot, that didn't happen. To be more clear about the job, we got a truck and stock every other day. In between truck slash stock days, one of the crew straightens up the store, usually it's me. So I end up seeing and fixing whatever things the other guy screw up. Last Monday, James tells me that the store manager isn't happy that I'm staying late on the off truck days. He says it's wasting the budget and I need to leave on time. I take him to one of the aisles that Bob works and show him several sections that are slowing me down and explain to him that the store manager would flip if he saw it. So does he want me to fix it or not? I tell him if he trains Bob better, then I can leave on time. He agreed that it couldn't be left unfixed and said he would talk to Bob. Again, that didn't happen. Bob kept doing what he had been doing, so the next two off-truck days, Tuesday and Thursday, I didn't fix it and left on time. When I got to work Saturday, I get a verbal write-up for the things I didn't fix because the store wasn't in good condition. I stayed and make sure the store was good and ended up leaving later than scheduled. Monday, when I get to work, I get called into the store manager's office and written up again. James wasn't there, this time for wasting payroll for staying late on Saturday. He goes on about how I was warned how it shouldn't take that long to straighten the shelf. I let him say all he had to say and then I told him he could find someone else to do it and went home. Now James has been texting me, asking me what happened and asking me to come back. He says that he explained to the store manager why I was taking so long and he said I can come back because we're so understaffed, the crew needs me and I shouldn't be without a job at Christmas time. Shut up, James. Unfortunately, this seems like a common experience in retail. I definitely know a few people who have been in similar situations to this person. But yeah, if upper management wants it, done a different way, they can come in and do it themselves. I noticed that a lot of people who wind up being district managers or in like upper management are people who have either never worked the retail job or haven't done it in so long that they're disconnected from reality and can't even try to empathize with their workers. It sounds like James is not doing his job properly by training Bob to make sure things are done efficiently and on time to the manager's liking. Like yes, Bob is not doing the job correctly, but it's also up to management to correct his errors and make sure he doesn't make them moving forward. So I don't know why this person was held responsible for Bob's errors. One thing that I find interesting though is that usually for jobs like this, they get mad if you don't stay late because like you have a life outside of work and apparently that's not good enough for them. Like in the retail companies that I've worked for in the past, I have gotten chewed out for not staying late or taking time off even though I gave ample warning. So I find that interesting. But this person said, thanks to all who wish me well in finding another their job. This was my second job and part time. I had figured it wise to save up money because of the nonsense happening. So no worries. I'm good. OK, that's good. The reason the budget is so screwed up is that it's done by department and by our department being understaffed. We had extra payroll, which they used to slot other departments workers under. So if Department A needs to have another worker, they will code them under our payroll and have them work in Department A. So technically we do have seven employees on paper, but three of them don't actually work with for us in our department. Our department just pays for them. It's a dirty trick to keep other areas staffed in the district from wondering why our department has high turnover. See, that's f***ing shady. That is shady. If a company has a high turnover rate, there's usually a reason why, and I think we have found that reason why. And really, it just screws over the department that this person formerly worked in. Since they have enough people on paper, they will constantly remain understaffed and overworked. So the person who wrote this, my heart goes out to you, especially as a former retail worker. I hope you find a new part-time job soon sooner rather than later. Hopefully one that pays you well and treats you with respect. But yeah, f corporations like this, this is just red flag after red flag after red flag. These managers, they don't care about you. They really fucking don't. We should see what people are saying. Not the so let them know you'll come back for a 20% raise and both write up sticking from your record, along with the freedom to work overtime at your own discretion. Anything short of that can fly a kite. If your store is that short, others will be too. You'll be able to find a similar or better job without too much difficulty. Good luck. This 
store just seems very poorly managed. And a lot of the times it's not the fault of the people who work in the actual store. It's because of the shady shit going on in upper management and the district management. But I'm going to end it there. I don't want to say more than I should and potentially get sued because I'll start name dropping. And I don't think that's a good idea. So I hope you enjoyed me going through r slash am I the asshole. If you would like to see a part two to this in the future, let me know down below. I thought this was really fun, really chill, really light, and I'd be down to do it again. And in general, if there's anything you want to see from me going forward, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit potential video ideas. But for the very last time this cinema season, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a tiny, tiny thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thank you for all the love that you have shown me, not just during Sinmas, but throughout all of 2022. 2023 is going to be a huge year, and I'm really excited for you to see what I have in store. Thank you for spending the 12 days of Sinmas with me. This was fun. Hopefully, this will turn into a holiday tradition. We'll see. Hopefully, I'm better at planning next year. Do not expect a full video from me until next year because baby needs to nap, but you might see me sooner than you think, so keep an eye out. Thank you again. I love you guys, and I'll see you very soon with a brand new video. Bye. I love you. Mwah.